My name is Shauna Lucy, and I am the director of Tosca for the fall 2018 season here at San Francisco Opera. So we have a wonderful task at hand, which is to make a classic interpretation of Tosca that's utterly fresh and new. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the piece of Tosca, we'll just say that Act One takes place in, at a church called Sant'Andrea della Valle. Act Two takes place in Scarpia's office in Palazzo Farnese. And Act Three takes place on the top of Castel Sant'Angelo. These are locations that you can go visit in Rome, which is a great trip to do. I've, I've been to two of the three, and it's wonderful to go and visit there. What we decided to do is not do like a slavish representation of these locations. Robert Innes Hopkins is the designer for both the sets and the costumes, and he and I have had lengthy discussions about aesthetics and how you take a space and you charge it with tension for the drama because Puccini never lets us rest in Tosca. It's such a great piece in that way. There's no sitting down. There's no, there's nothing that's extraneous. And so we've made the architecture to reflect that. So our act one set is not based exactly on Sant'Andrea della Valle because in talking about the piece itself, the passion of the piece we both felt evokes primary colors because it's so bright and passionate. So we found a different Duomo, still of the Baroque period, that we are basing our Act One set. It's based on that. Now in Act Two, when we talked about the character of Scarpia, we wanted to talk about what kind of space would a man like Scarpia create for himself? And we both agreed, a self-made man who's the chief, who's the head of the secret police, he would have a kind of a lair, almost like a rat's nest that he's created in, in the gorgeous Palazzo Farnese and the things that he's dragged into that nest with him. And then for the beginning, for the uh, last act, Act 3, Castel Sant'Angelo, we talked at length because Rome at the time was under siege. So it, there is a war going on with the Napoleonic forces against the king and the papal forces. So we, we you know, if you go to Castel Sant'Angelo today, you go to the top, it's a place that's very visited by tourists, of course. Everyone wants to see it. It's beautiful. It's a great way to see the expanse of Rome. But if a place is war-torn, probably there's rubble. It's a little bit more destroyed than that. And even though in historically 1800, there's a famous statue of an angel that is there at the top of Castel Sant'Angelo. Well, actually in 1800, they had not placed that statue there yet. Now, when you see productions of Tosca, people always put the, the statue of the angel there and it makes sense. But we've done, we've done a little, we've got a little twist, which you'll have to come and see the show to see what it is. Um, but I think what we have created are dynamic spaces in which these, this incredible cast can really fight through the tension, keep the drama high, and honor the work of Puccini and make the music that moves us so much. And then in terms of costumes, I myself am obsessed with clothes. I'm not going to lie. So Robert and I had a great time talking about what kind of dress lines we really want to go with. We want to make sure that the singers look their absolute best. And Color theory always comes into play when you're making these design choices. You want the people who are going on stage to feel their best and to look their best. And I know that we're doing that with these costumes. They're going to be gorgeous, just like the set is. Absolutely opulent, as opulent as the music of Puccini. So we're trying to match all of those things together. And I think that that's going to give us the fresh feeling, that, that richness that makes a, a production of Tosca for 2018.